new world. It has many new career choices, but one that stands tall above all else is engineering, and schools reflect that, with MIT, NC State, and others. But where can one learn programming, mechanics, and other skills to get a head start before college? Taking STEM, or Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math classes, is a good place to start. But where can you put your skills to the test? Where can you show your knowledge in a practical way? Where can your love for engineering grow? First Robotics, an international competition made up of high school students, mentors, and volunteers to unite for a common goal, design, build, and drive a robot. Each individual team has their own path and story, but today we follow a path from Wilmington, North Carolina, the Wired Wizards. My name is Elizabeth MacDonald. Will Lewis. My name is Josh Hodges. John Piper. My name is Jasmine, and I am the coach for the Wired Wizards. I found out about FIRST by a commercial. I just, I saw it and it looked like the kids were having a lot of fun. So I started doing research on it to find out more about it. And then as a student at UNCW, I asked some more students and we decided to start a team as a community. As of every year, the season starts with kickoff for the teams of FIRST to find out what the game is. Last year's game was called Aerial Assist where our alliances had to score points by putting balls into a designated goal. This year, however, it was much different. After everybody funnels into the auditorium, a video that recaps the past year's accomplishments is played. And finally, after the much-deserved anticipation, the game is unveiled. And the objective is to build stacks of totes, place recycling bins on top, and recycle litter. The game is played by two alliances of three teams each. When the game is finished being explained, the high schoolers go online to go over the rules in depth and to start brainstorming. Once it is ready, the human player game is played to make sure that everyone knows exactly how the game will look at competition and possible strategies the robots may use. Build season this year, we had two captains. We had Hannah and Skyler. Um, they worked together really well with getting everything going, um, planning out what build team was going to do and planning out what marketing team was going to do. I worked with them a lot with changing the way that we ran the team this year. We tried really hard to make it more, make team captain more of a management type role where they were managing the leaders of the different sections of the team. So we have build leaders, we have a build leader, a marketing leader, a media leader, safety, finance, and we worked on management skills and how our two team captains could manage and make sure that what was getting done needed to be done for build season.
The rigorous six-week build season starts as soon as the team returns, with the undisputedly most time-consuming phase to complete, design. After hours of work and dedication, the team comes to a conclusion on what to build. And when that doesn't work, it's back to the drawing board. Don't be swayed though, with long hours and dedication, fun and games come with it. Eventually, after many attempts, there is success, and the project goes to the programmers to make a functioning robot their top priority. Build team builds the robot, so they have to work with wiring and making sure that the robot stays within the weight and is able to perform the tasks that the team decided needs to, to be performed to play the game. Then we have the programming team, and the programming team programs the robot to, this year it was to be able to lift. So the programming and the build team have to work together enough to be able to determine um, what the robot can do mechanically, but then also what the robot can do on the software side. This is my first year on the team, and right now I'm in the programming division, so right now I'm learning how to program. We're using Java and Python as our two primary programming languages. And it's really fun, and I think it'll be a great learning experience for me since I want to do something involving STEM as my adult career. Finally, at the end of the build season, the robot has bags and cannot be touched before competition. Six weeks of construction, it's time for the robot and the team to show off what it can do at competition, whether it's ready or not. Over 50 first teams from the whole state of North Carolina and surrounding states show up to display their talent. The event is three days of constant fun. When not competing, teams are repairing their robot, scouting out possible candidates for the final eight, and capturing the attention of cameras by dancing and cheering on the teams. Robotics promotes cooperation, which means teams often help one another by giving away much needed parts and provide support for teams who might not be doing so well. This creates a feeling of community that cannot be felt anywhere else. Okay, so competition went really well for the 2015 season. I think that Despite the fact that our robot did tend to break a lot this season, the students were really quick and able to be able to fix it. And I think that this year's, the team was did really well with marketing and did really well with working with the other students and getting to know the other teams. When the qualifying rounds are over, the top eight teams get to choose two other teams that will be on their alliance for the rest of the competition. Unfortunately, that is where the Wired Wizards road ended, but yours can start today. First Robotics is a place where students can hone their skills before college in a STEM career, and that's what makes it so valuable. The event is fun for the whole family, both young and old, so we encourage you to find your local first team and join or volunteer today.